Everybody, thanks to Offensive there earlier on. Well, several hundred people gathered in Parkview, Pretoria for the launch of the Freedom Front Plus uh, manifesto. The party, South Africa's fifth largest, is seeking to grow its support at the uh, local upcoming elections. Uh, for more on this story, let's bring in Natasha Piri live for us uh, from Pretoria. Natasha, very, very good afternoon to you once again. Big takeaways for you from that manifesto. Well, definitely, Blaine. Very good afternoon to you. And that concludes uh, the Freedom Fund Plus's uh, manifesto launch. You heard there uh, just moments ago from party leader Mr. Peter Grunewald delivering his 10-point uh, plan speech for the party under the theme Stop the DK. Now, he's been saying that under the ANC government over the past 27 years, uh, you know, the rot in local government has been growing further and further, and we've seen a decay in it, according to his words. He had said that, you know, under the Freedom Front Plus leadership, uh, things like affirmative action will be scrapped, uh, things like black economic uh, empowerment will be scrapped as well. And he spoke also, Blaine, about, you know, about the, you know stopping the appointment of officials, uh, you know, on uh, merit. And he also spoke about other issues like raising fair rates and taxes to stop unfair uh, increases as well, creating a favorable environment for the private sector to actually invest uh, in the country and our local municipalities. Also, on another uh, interesting note, especially on coalition governments, saying that uh, the FF Plus would not be going into coalition with the EFF, neither the ANC. But let's just actually speak to, you know, the people here on the ground, because remember, Blaine, local governance is about the people on the ground who will be feeling the brunt of uh, service delivery. Here's a gentleman here, sir. So I saw you were listening attentively to, uh, you know, what your party leader had to say. What do you think about his speech? What are your main takeaways? Yeah, it was very inspirational. Obviously, me coming as a candidate, uh, Ward 78, it's very inspirational and very empowering. It shows me and makes me a firm believer of the party. We are no longer a small party. We are a large party. And each and every other party needs to actually uh, embrace that. I know they don't want to, but at the facts, the facts is everything. People are voting for change. They don't want the same old every four years, every election comes to the time, give you a sweater, give you a cap, and buy your vote. We don't buy votes. Okay, we, we do what we say, and we say what we do. Um, and that makes me a firm believer of the party, and that's why I'm standing as a candidate. In which ward, in which area? Ward 78, Ward 61. Um, I've got three wards, um, and hopefully I can make a change in those communities. Uh, in which area is this, really? So they are in Centurion, uh, Diuvas, um, as well as um, Yesteres and Lodium. So what main takeaways from this speech will you be implementing within those wards if uh, you do indeed get elected? Well, the main focus would be obviously the informal settlements, the electricity, the water, the potholes, everything that, that, that affects the community. That's, that's who we're offering a service to. We, we're not here to fill our pockets. So we have a saying, on is here for the sock, need sock me. Meaning we are here for solutions and to find problems for the community and the people. We're not here to fill our pockets. That was Mr. Veli Jacobs. Of course, he is uh, a candidate uh, and he is vying for a number of wards in Centurion and, of course, in Estres as well. Let's just also take this conversation elsewhere to this gentleman here. <laughs> Uh, he raised a 10-point plan. Okay, Menango NS Doran Jogo from Escort KZN. Um Freedom Freedom Front Plus. Government. How has it personally affected you, that policy? Um, 
isitukanisa phakathi singabantu abamnyama yenza abanye becebe kakhulu kunabanye so ngaleyo ndlela kuye kwacaca ukuthi ngempela ngempela angeke sikwazi ukulingana emazingeni aphansi kuye lokhala government uma kusazo kuchuja kwakusetshenzwe ngaleyo ndlela baba um, i think one thing that i found interesting that he didn't touch on the issue of land reform lolu taba lolu he didn't touch on it and nakhona i mean singabantu abamnyama abantu bayasho ukuthi bafunizwe izwe labo back what do you have to say about that ngo empeleni kahle kahle thina as freedom front plus em lento yomhlaba siyayibona ukuthi akusinto elula noma siyo into okungakhulunywa ngayo kalula kodwa yinto ebucayi kakhulu okuyomele ukuthi makhulunywa ngayo kukhulunywe ngayo ihlanganise wonke umuntu o o omhlali wala baba nyanga uzi ukuthi thini kodwa wena baba ufuna umhlaba wena no 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 umhlaba noma ngawudinga umhlaba kodwa kubalekele kumele ngazo uzosebenzisa kanjani ileyo into ebalekele ukuthi mawuthathe umhlaba uyazi ukuthi uzosebenzisa kanjani ngoba umhlaba umhlaba akuwona umhlaba kuphela ngokuthi kufanele ukuthi kwakhiwe kuwona kodwa ne economy nokukhula komnotho kusemhlabeni so ngaleyo ndlela kubalekele ukuthi ngesinye isikhathi sizibone ukuthi nathi ifanele ukuthi sibe strong for my cities for numhla abasu as with sosebenzi saranja and the issue about building a capable state uh, employing the right people for the right jobs ukabanga kanja ngicabanga ukuthi lo ikhona ukubaleke kakhulu ngoba kuzonciphisani kuzonciphisa i corruption okokuqala okwesibili kuzonciphisa amathubo ukuthi kuqasheke ngokwe politics lokho kuthiwa ikheda deployment so ngaleyo ndlela wonke umuntu okumele ukuthi asebenzele umphakathi kumasipala kubalekile ukuthi abe umuntu qualified ebe umuntu futhi okumele nowaziye ngosizo lomphakathi ahlala kuwona so njengoba ukuthi when uphume escort do you think there are high chances of the ward uh, candidates in your area actually winning uh, the, these elections yes 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 it's in a support and kulga kulu and the freedom front plus yet underscore she and uh, it has it and young yeah okay uh, let's just also take this conversation to this lady over here ma'am you're live on sabc your name please and where you're from uh, good morning i'm marcel marat film from plus limpopo provincial leader and mpl of limpopo okay. michelle lovely meeting you i mean what are your main takeaways uh from uh this manifesto launch i think we we got, we got a message here to go out strong to the voters out out there and tell them that we need change we need to stop the decay in the country and all municipalities and this bad service delivery i think it's time for us to, to stand up and to change the whole the whole situation because people are suffer on, on all levels in municipalities michelle i mean the ff plus have has been growing um you know in various provinces gauteng limpopo mpumalanga you name it how will you ensure that you know the party grows within your province? I mean, you're up against the ANC, you're up against the EFF, the home of, you know, Julius Malema. Julius Malema, I'm I'm not I'm not scared of any political party because I'm a believer in God, and I trust God that will give us the space and the place to go forward in these elections. We are growing tremendously in Limpopo. Uh, you know, we never had a seat there in the legislature in 24 years and I got the first seat in 2019 that means we're growing and even now the people you know from different diversity coming to us to be candidates that shows you that they're also tired so we're gonna fight for the people's rights I heard Mr. Hunneval saying that you will never ever go into a collision with the ANC with the EFF never not negotiable not negotiable the ANC and the EFF they are supporting BEE they're supporting affirmative action and we cannot afford to go on with that kind of support by killing the people on the ground with service delivery. People up in Limpopo is one of the poorest uh, provinces in the, in the country with the most people, with our jobs there. So that means they need to be a serious change in Limpopo. So we cannot support the EFF. Thank you so Thank much, you Michelle. Much. Well, last but not least, let's just take <laughs> this conversation to Mr. Kronenwald. I mean, on a lighter note, how are you feeling? You've delivered your 10-point plan manifesto launch as opposed to an 8-point plan in 2016. How are things different this year? No. How are things different this year? Well, if I say how yeah, are things different this time, you must remember our manifestos and our policies are constant. Uh, we have uh, certain values which we drive, 
therefore you will get quite a lot of similarities in our f f previous manifestos. But what is different of what we've included? For instance, we said that if you look at a certain warts, a minimum percentage, say for instance 10%, must be utilized for those specific areas. Because what is happening, they just take the money and uh, they spend it on something else. Secondly, we also say that all money paid for water and electricity must be ring-fenced and it must pay the providers. The suppliers must be paid because what is happening, they take that money and they pay salaries for it and in the end ESCOM comes and they say, well, we're not going to get electricity anymore. And I mean, if you go and look that about 43% uh, of civil servants are not qualified to do the job they are in, we say that we will have a proper audit of all the employees. And unfortunately, if you're not qualified to do the job, I mean, you cannot continue in that job. It's as simple as that. Let's just take uh, chief financial officers. I mean, it is disturbing that 48% of them are not qualified for their job and they're working with my and your, uh, our taxpayers' uh, money. So those are some differences we say we are very strong on. And then we believe this election is about coalitions. Uh, as I said, uh, in the majority of uh, uh, all the municipalities, there is not a single opposition party who is on its own will uh, have a 50% plus uh, one. And you've made it clear that you won't be going into a coalition with the ANC and the EFF? No doubt about it. We will not go in uh, any coalition with the ANC or the EFF. At any point, Mr. Kronenfeld, we were point. taught to say never say never. These are politics, remember? No, I say we will never go in any coalition with that. You must remember, for instance, in 2011, uh, in KZN, we were in such a situation. But then we went into a coalition with uh, the Inkata Freedom Party. So we had ample opportunities to go into a co coalition government uh, with the ANC, but we never did. Uh, so, I mean, we, I can't foresee that that will happen. So we are quite clear on that issue. Mr. Kronenfeld, you, you seem to be appealing to the colored community and the black community as well. I mean, in terms of the colored community in Cape Town, you've done very well for yourselves there. But do you not see yourself evolving or changing your policies, especially pertaining to, you know, the black community over time? No, we are not changing our policies. What we said is that, yes, we are, di we are di a diversity in South Africa. And as I said, the preamble refers to unity in our diversity. But what the Freedom Front Plus has always said, but recognize and respect that diversity. And that's why I also say, always say, be proud whoever you are, whether you're a Zulu or a Kosa or whatever. I'm an Afrikaner. Yes, be proud of it. But that doesn't mean that we cannot work together. We in South Africa, and I always use the example, if a bush is on fire and you're a big tree in that bush, don't think you're not going to burn. You're also going to burn. And therefore we have to take hands, but with respect, with our diversity. Uh, I always said that uh, sometimes if I go overseas and they hear you from South Africa on the Zuma presidency, the first question is, but is it true that your president's got four wives? And then I said, yes, but it's his tradition. I respect his culture for that. So respect mine. And the moment we have that, respect, respect for each other, respect for our differences, then I can assure you we're going to build a better South Africa. You talk about mutual respect and you talk about diversity. So let's just say you have, uh, you know, a black person within your constituency and they say, listen, um, Mr. Kronenfeld, we want the land. And I know where your party stance is on land reform. Then what happens in that situation? Well, let me just first say, we already had in 2016 uh, municipal election, I had three black candidates in the Northwest already. But if they come and say, but we want land, we have a policy on land reform. And we say, firstly, there's enough land in South Africa. Secondly, we believe in the principle of a willing buyer, willing seller. And we say that the corruption in land reform is the problem, not land. And if you go to cities or metros, there should be proper planning on how you're going to expand the city or whatever the case may be. And then those principles uh, applies. 
because then you say, yes, we're going to buy this uh, land, we need more land for people to build houses, but then we also say that you must first ensure that, for instance, the services are there, that there's water, the, uh, that the, the sewage is there, all those sort of things, and the electricity, then the people can move in. It is unfair towards people. It doesn't matter whether they're black, white or whatever, to just allow them to come together, uh, have a squatter camp, but there's no services. That's unfair, and we say we must get discipline back. So land in South Africa is not really a shortage. It is a matter of proper planning to ensure that each and every one gets a piece of land, and it is possible. Mr. Gonneveld, we are 23 days away from the elections. What are you hoping for at the polls? Your party has been doing well since 2019. In Tswane, you've gained about four seats in the last elections. What outcome are you hoping for? Well, we've got 12 seats in Parliament at the moment, so yes, it was quite an increase. Well, I will be very satisfied if we can just double our uh, uh, councillors. I think it's quite possible, and it is always in history. You can see the moment a party is doing well in a provincial national uh, election, that wave flows over to municipal elections. And we hope to ensure that that continues, and we also say that if it continues, it will also be a good boost to ensure that in 2024, I do believe if opposition parties work hard and they build on this, uh, can I say, uh, flow of voters coming and vote for the opposition parties moving away from the ANC government, in 2024, we can have a coalition of opposition parties as government of South Africa. Mr. Hunnevel, thank you so much and thanks for your time. All the best at the polls. Thank you. Natasha. Thank you. Well, Blaine, there you have it. You've heard it from the party leader himself, Mr. Hunnevel, just unpacking his 10-point plan <coughs> a manifesto launch as opposed to the 8-point plan that they actually had in 2016. And, of course, he is looking to double the amount of councils that they have. As you know, the Freedom Fund Plus will be contesting over 3,000 100 wards out of the 4,468 wards across all nine provinces in South Africa. And of course, the party is looking for a positive outcome. With that said, uh, Blaine from Team uh, SABC here in the Citadel of Power in Pretoria, in Parkview. It's been an absolute pleasure bringing you this uh, manifesto launch. With that said, it's back to you in studio.